Amen. I, I promise not to keep you for so long. Hallelujah. Uh, I shouldn't promise. I just leave it. Just leave it. I have left it. I have left it. Um, we bless the Lord for his grace and his mercies that are new every single day. Now, we've been looking at the four seasons of life and what we've been dealing with generally. You remember we started off from destiny. It's okay, Matthew, you can pick it. It just rolled. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Um, um, uh, when, when we began to, to, to uh, last the other month, that's July, June, we began with destiny and we were talking about our destiny and then we needed to know how to pray while we are in our space and place of destiny. And um, uh, we also um, went on to look at seasons. We went on to look at seasons so that even as we pray, we know how to pray. Hallelujah. The Bible says that some of us, what do we do? We pray a miss. We pray a miss. We pray a miss. And sometimes it's because of one, of, one thing or the other. Mm, mm. As, as, as my daughter. <laughs> Normally at home I speak softly. She's hearing me shout. She's wondering what's going on here. Uh, where were we? What else were we? Uh, so, uh, aha. <laughs> so, w w when, when you talk about the, these four seasons, uh, these are the seasons that uh, David, David, we're looking at David's life, and the four seasons in his life that he had to go through. Now, one of the things that you need to note about David, if you asked David while he was going through the things that he's going through, he would have not, he would have told you maybe probably something very, very different. Hallelujah. Because he didn't know that God was taking him through certain seasons of his life. He may thought he was probably just living just the way we do. But sometimes when we read his story, his story is beautiful, isn't it? But when you're living the story, it's not. When David is living this story, it's not as sweet as we are reading it now. Because sometimes when we read the story of David, we see the full picture of what God was doing. But while David was living, praise the name of the Lord, he couldn't see the full picture. He had to live one day at a time. Uh, he had to do what? To live one day at a time. And sometimes along the way we can easily give up because we haven't seen the full picture. You, you can imagine, you, you didn't intend to go for war or for battle. As a matter of fact, you, you had been asked to go and take food to your brothers, isn't it? But that's the day that you meet Goliath. And when you meet Goliath, you ask a few people questions. You didn't say you wanted to fight Goliath. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the only one who reads these scriptures. David did not say, I want to beat Goliath. No. People reported what he had, uh, he was asking. And then the king came and asked him, Ah, uh, Goliath. Say, hey, Bwana Sifiwe. Amen. So when he's going through his life, it is not as easy as you would imagine. Bwana Yesu Sifiwe. And I want to declare to you today, don't give up because the Lord is writing, is still writing your story in Jesus' mighty name. Maybe the people who come after you, they will read your story and say, wow, how I wish I was like George. How I wish I was like... <laughs> Hallelujah. But they didn't know that when you had sometimes to go hungry. Sometimes you didn't have anywhere to minister. Sometimes you didn't have... Oh, Amen. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the story, sometimes God, God doesn't show you the whole picture. Uh, how many of you know? Me, me I used to sometimes, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, there are some people who would come, me, I have seen my husband, I have seen my wife. I said, hey, Kwani Mimi, who do, where do I pray? Kwani Mimi na unanga nini? I know who he is. Me, I'm there saying... Nikiingia maombi na sikia tu niko discourage and say, oh, rakaza, Lord, show me as well. Show me. Look at a neighbor who is next to you and tell the neighbor, neighbor, the Lord is still writing your story. Don't give up. You know, just the Lord sometimes does some things. I was telling people in the first service, very, very interesting things. So we want to do a crusade here in the city. Amen. 
If your neighbor, you realize they are not even excited. <laughs> Tell them next Sunday, please. <laughs> next Sunday. Uh, are you understanding me now? So uh, we, we went, we were with the chairman there, we were with the Moji there, we were with the uh, Zippy was also there, a few of us. So we went to see that, the, the, the place where we went, there at Hilton. You see Hilton, there is a deserted house there. We will do it there. Just, just ride on my faith. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> so we went there in, in, in the course of the day. And when we went there, you know how town is. Sometimes the biggest, the biggest, when we, when we looked at the place, oh, the stage is going to be at the nini, the nini, the nini, and we looked at all those places, and we said, now what are we going to do? Because the biggest thing there is security. And, and we know the people at City Light has born us, if you were well-meaning people, beautiful people. I mean, the men are very nice, soft guys. <laughs> oh, just some nice men, hallelujah. They don't want trouble with anybody. They are living their own lives, born as if you were. So he said, where are we going to get security? And I said, Lord, this thing, can it really happen? So we were, we, 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 then, then we, I, I, came, I came down to, the, I, I was having a meeting then. After the meeting, I went for the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Congress that was there at Nyayo Stadium. And the Congress was there. Uh, 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 so we finished around about nine-ish, if the meeting was over. So now we were going home. Moji decided to follow me. And so we were with him. I don't know whether he's in, he's in church, but he's somewhere. He should be somewhere. Ah! Man of God, I had not seen you. You know now. I, I, forgive me. The men are soft. I told you. They are easy. I want a man in them too. What are we? So what you decide to, we, we go together. I told you, what you have, he says, pass it to end so we, there, we finished the question. I told, I tell Moji, Moji, I feel like I want to go to pray in town at midnight. Hey, Moji, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Moji say, ah, pastor. <laughs> He's listening to me. He doesn't. I'm looking at him. He doesn't want to discourage me. Eh? <laughs> so he says, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, prayer is important. <laughs> At about 10.30 evening, I'm in the town. Hey. <laughs> I went to town. I think Moji, when he got into the car, he said, that's a pastor Kiuli. At least what I need, I'll be there to write the story. <laughs> so we came with Moji to town. Hey. So I told Moji, ah, so to Kapatana. Hey, sasa, when I saw Moji, I had a mimi niko charged. Sasa, ah. So we started prayers. But you know, that place, because it's, it's a bit dark, you don't pray while you are uh, shouting. You know the way we, hara, kaza, tara, and moving around, you might move <laughs> when you're supposed to come back. <laughs> Moji doesn't see me anymore. <laughs> I'm being worked on. <laughs> Turn to a neighbor, tell a neighbor, neighbor, your story will be beautiful. <laughs> so now we are there with Moji. Moji, hey, Moji is also praying, but Kwanza here on iPhone. Sasa, I think I'm, I may wake up a belt. You know? <laughs> now, now I'm going to time a ringtone. After five minutes in Aliyah, just for you to know Iko. You are but so we were there now to 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 kwapa na moji so to naomba tu tumenyenyekea sasa all of a sudden we see six people coming we are talking about now it's about 11:30 six people just jumping into that place boo 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 god and kasema okay i'll continue praying but let me fast <laughs> Scan. <laughs> they didn't talk to us, so they, they were like, nyumba, kido, kido. we are there with Moji, we are still figuring out, do we continue praying? Ama we, ama sisi tujiondoe, kukarushua tia gas. 
I said, I said, wow. <laughs> Sasa mimi na boji tuko hapo tunapanda milima huko. Bwana siku you are seeing us. Tukiondokea. Saa sita usiku. Hey, before long the guys also are, are running. You know when you see Kenya you see people running you also. You don't wait to find out where are na kwa news. Where are na kwa news you don't wait to find out because it can be tough. Anyway, we are there with Moji, so we, 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 tear gas kapita. Then the guys, walo alikuwa merusha tear gas wakatoka. Wakatoka, tukenda tukawa nokia, they came out. So I asked, kwa nini merusha tear gas? I said, no, 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 no. You know, there are some people who are hiding here. And they are stealing from people in this city. We want to flush them out. So the, we began to talk with the people. Moji is here, he can confirm the story. We began to talk with the people. They told us, we know you guys. See, uh, the, the, I told them our church is in uh, Nairobi. They said, yeah, we know. Are there people disturbing you there? He says, we are police. He told, he told, they, they asked me, so pastor, you what are you doing here? <laughs> As we know what we are doing, but what are you doing? I said, ah, you, we are praying because we want to put up a crusade at the end of September and we, we are believing God that this place will be secure. They told us, then God has gone before you because we are here to make sure that by September, this place will be safe. I said, look at that. That sometimes when you look at your life, you don't see as though something, there's anything going on. When we be, began to discuss that story with Moji, we, we were saying, now how are we going to handle security here? Kumbe the Lord has already gone. Uh, I came to tell you that your story will be beautiful in Jesus' mighty name. So when, when, when David is going through all the things that he's going through, he doesn't see the end. He doesn't see the end of this story. Because ladies and gentlemen, I know you know the story. When in chapter, uh, chapter number 17, that's when he kills Goliath. In chapter number 19, the king loves him. And the king tells him, come and stay in my house. And after the king has told him to come stay in my house, he, the son of the king, who is uh, Jonathan, love, falls in love with this man. He doesn't know that God, what God is doing is aligning people in your path uh, for his own purposes in life. Hallelujah. Later on, this man is uh, elevated to become the soldier, uh, uh, to become a captain of soldiers. Hallelujah. Now, if you understand this story, ladies and gentlemen, you will know that this is an act of God. Number one, for him to, uh, for him to be friends with Jonathan, it is an act of God. And for Jonathan to give him his coat, it is an act of God. And I'll tell you why. Because Jonathan is 29 years of age. David is about 15, 16 years of age. You know that that kind of relationship, there is no way you can be, uh, uh, you can be friends with a teenager. Well, buona sifuwe. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you're saying, this is my best friend. It, it almost looks suspicious, isn't it? Isn't it? But Jonathan, if you read your Bible carefully, Jonathan is 29 years. David is 16 years. It has to be an act of God. Uh, for this 29-year-old to remove his coat, it should be the other way around. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. It should be the other way around. But he removes his coat and he gives it to who? To David. And he says, David, I have loved so much. With all his youth, with all his, uh, him being young, the Bible tells us that Jonathan loved him. The Bible continues to say that when his father, who was a uh, 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 soul, brought him into the house, the Bible says, and Saul made him a captain of soldiers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, reason with me here. He made them, the Bible says, and he carried himself very well, and he made him a captain of many soldiers. And the Bible says, and the men loved him. 
You'll find that in the book of First Samuel, uh, First Samuel chapter 18 and verse number 5. If you could put it uh, for us there. Verse number 5. Quickly, quickly, quickly. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see something here. Uh -huh. All that is happening is an act of God. There is no way a teenager can lead a battalion of soldiers. The Bible, when you read in chapter number 17, he says, the Bible says that he is inexperienced. But yet, the Bible says that Saul has given him to lead a battalion of soldiers. Did you find the scripture? Wait, 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 what was happening? Uh -huh, there you go. Let's read it together. One to go. David, David went, went out. out. Was successful everywhere Saul sent him. Uh -huh. so Saul put, put him, him in, in charge, charge of the troops. The troops. It this pleased, pleased the entire army as well as Saul's officials. Who is this? A 17 year old boy, a 16 year old boy. The Bible is saying that it pleased the entire army and also the officials who are there. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to tell you may the Lord give you wisdom. That even people who are older than you will fall in love with you because of the wisdom that is being displayed from your life in Jesus' mighty name. So now, he makes him a leader of the entire battalion. Now something happens. When they begin to go out for battle, the Bible says, now uh, this man who is called David begins to lead his battalion and they begin to win many wars. As they win many wars, one day, the women break out in a song. Women. Hallelujah. <laughs> they break out in a song. Listen, when you read your Bible carefully, the Bible says, they danced unto Saul. Not unto David. They danced unto Saul. And they said, Saul has killed his thousands. But, what are they doing? They are dancing. They are dancing. They are saying, Saul has killed the, his thousands. But David has killed his tens of thousands. Who are they dancing before? Talk to a lady who is next to you and tell them wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do you know that Saul and David, they, they were not enemies? Saul and David were not enemies. Saul and David did not uh, have anything against each other. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, even Saul loved David. But from the day they had the women You've got to be careful with some of the things that you hear because you will make people enemies while you are not enemies with them. Hallelujah. When Saul heard the women singing, immediately the Bible says, and Saul was angry that they had ascribed to him thousands and they had ascribed to David tens, tens, tens of thousands. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, and from that day, they began to become enemies. So now, David becomes enemy with Saul, and David is driven out of, out of Israel because some people sang. <laughs> Talk to somebody who is next to you and tell them, be careful. <laughs> tell them to have some level of wisdom. <laughs> now, the story we are just about to read begins with David at a place called Ziklag. Ziklag is not even in Israel because he had to go there because some women sang. <laughs> David becomes a fugitive while he's not even a fugitive because David at some point had to act mad to the king of Gath. And he went there without clothes because um, <laughs> David
David is almost killed. Hallelujah. Because the problem is not the women here, born as if we were. We are talking about the ones in the Bible. But the ones here have wisdom. Turn to a lady and tell them, the wisdom I see in you. Uh, so, now listen. So we, I want us to begin. Because we are just going to read scriptures and then I'm going to be out of your way. We, we are not going to go into the points. I'll just read the scriptures and then I'll be out of your way. So now, when we talk about the seasons of life, you begin from a place called obscurity. This is a place where you're not known. This is a place where you're fighting the lion, the, the, the bear, and, and what have you. And then that ushers you into a season of shine. Now, you need to understand that the season of shine is not the end. As a matter of fact, the season of shine is like what you would call a preview of how your life is going to turn out. Immediately when God gives you that season to shine, what he goes ahead to do is that he allows what we call now the formation stage. Because ladies and gentlemen, before you get into your place of destiny, you must be formed. Because at this level of destiny, you become an authority. And sometimes when you're not ready, you will mistreat people. What you will do is that uh, 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 when you speak from this place of destiny, you speak with a lot of authority. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So when now God opens you up to a place where you have begun to shine, you have killed Goliath, you have killed uh, uh, the Philistine, and now your name is known, God again now transitions you into a place of formation. And at this place of formation, ladies and gentlemen, is where God now begins to, to deal with you as a man. Not as a crowd. He begins to deal with you as a man. Because he has to make sure that your heart is in its rightful posture. That's why when you begin to read your scriptures carefully, he says, Eliab looks the part. Eliab is masculine. Eliab is the eldest son in the house of Jesse. The prophet looks at him and he says, surely this is the Lord's anointed. God rebukes him and tells him, I don't choose men the way you choose men. I choose men according to the condition of their hearts. So now, when God begins to make, cause you to shine, after you have shown, <laughs> now he takes you through another season. And that season is a season now of formation before now he can bring authority into your life. Now, when you look at uh, 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 my spiritual father, Bishop JB, he's, he is in a place of authority. Hallelujah. I was telling people in the first service, I went to see him at some point after he had come to launch the church. And he had told me that the heavens are open. And when he told me that the heavens are open, I went to see him and I told him, I don't, I, I, oh, Bishop, the church is not going. He, he said, shut up. What are you saying? Are you the one who grows the church? And then he tells me, you continue preaching the word, the Lord will bring his people. And the same word that is over my life shall be in yours. That in every seat that you, that you have, God shall supply people for it. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never again gone back to that place. Because him, he's in a place of authority. What does he do? He just declares things. Let me tell you, my wife is here, she can tell you, she's behind there. She can tell you, one time we were spending a lot of money with our children. We were at Mata Hospital almost every week. And I, now, it's so interesting because when I would get, I was tithing, bonus, if you don't say, hey, pastor, why are you tithing? I was tithing. <laughs> every, every now and then, we, one day, I got annoyed and I said, this is, this is not correct. This is not right. So what did I do? I picked my children, my wife, and we went to see Bishop. Bishop, we didn't even go to his office. We were at the parking lot. I told Bishop, Bishop, my children have been getting sick, and I don't know what is the problem. Akanulza, where have they been getting sick? He said, bring me oil. He put oil on his hand. He placed his hands on, on their ears. He says, from today, you'll never be sick again. I tell you without a shadow of doubt, from that day, from that day, 
my children have never been sick again. When you see now, those kinds of people have entered into a place of destiny where now there is a lot of authority in their lives. Are you understanding me, ladies and gentlemen? When you have not been formed and your heart is not in its right posture, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to destroy people when you get into your place of destiny without first of all going through this stage called the formation stage. Because what it does, this formation stage, is that it helps you remove excesses in your heart. I... You see now people are not saying amen, neither are they bringing an offering here. Be have you not read this word in the book of Hebrews that the Bible says that God disciplines them that he loves for the work that he has set before them? Have you not read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse number 6, that he disciplines those who he, he loves because of the work that is ahead? Hallelujah. That's why you've got to go through the formation stage. Praise the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of the Lord. Because some of us want to remain in shine. Uh, hallelujah. Where everybody is just recognizing you. You're just feeling good about your life. Hallelujah. And when you walk in the streets here, people are just high-fiving you. High-fiving you. They're telling you, we watched you. Way after they have watched you. Now you need to go through the formation stage. Can I now show you in scripture? Can I show you in scripture? Let's go. Let's go. Quickly. Ah, we are reading together. One to go. Shortly after Saul's David returned from defeating the Amalekites and remained in Ziklag for two days. Do you remember that place I told you, Ziklag? It's not in Israel. It's in Philistine. Hallelujah. So David is not even staying in Philistine. Him and his family and other men, they are staying where? In, they are not staying in Israel. They are staying in the land of Philistine. Now look at this. What happens? Next day, a man escaped from Saul's camp uh -huh. with torn clothes and dirty hair. Uh -huh. He approached David, fell to the ground, bowed down to him. David asked him, where did you come from? He answered him, I just escaped from Israel's encampment. Uh -huh. Go on, quickly. David, David continued, continued questioning question. him. How, How did, did things, things go? go? Please tell me. He replied, the army has fled the battlefield. Many of the army are wounded or have died. And Saul and his son, Jonathan, are also dead. David, David asked, asked the young man, man who related the story. How, How do you, you know, know that, that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? The young man who had been relating the story answered, I happened to be on at Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul, leaning on his spear. Meanwhile, the chariots and horsemen were rapidly drawing near. Saul glanced behind him, saw me, and called out to me. So I replied, Here I am. He asked me, Who are you? So, so I answered him, I'm I am an Amalekite. Uh huh. Go, go on. He begged, he begged me, me please, please come and stand, stand here next to me and kill, and kill me, me because I'm still alive. So I stood next to him and killed him because I knew that he wouldn't live after he had fallen. I took the crown that had been on his head along with the bracelet that had been on his arm and I brought you. On hearing this, David grabbed his clothes and tore them as did all the men who were attending to him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, David, who has been chasing David? Who has been making David's life difficult? Who has been denying David the opportunity to even live in his own home country? But when Saul dies, look at the heart of David. What is the heart of David? David. Uh -huh. The Bible says, want to go? They mourned and wept and, wept and decided to fast until dusk or so. What are they saying to the Lord as they are fasting? What kind of heart is this? That your enemies, you are mourning for them because Saul had become an enemy to David. But ladies and gentlemen, you are saying you want to be a king. You are saying, oh, I want to be like David, a man after God's own heart. Twelewane. Atwelewane. 
When you, on the prayers on Thursday, you will be counseling your boss. I decree and declare, out nature, go, go, go. This man, he's the same man who has been chasing David. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, from the day that David killed Goliath, it is, when we read this story, it's 10 years later. So it is 10 years of frustration. 10 years of frustration. The man, David, had to go and get his family from Bethel. Bethlehem, sorry, sorry. And he got them from Bethlehem and he took them to Ziklag in the land of Philistine because Saul was going to kill him. Saul is making David's life difficult. But David, ladies and gentlemen, after the Lord has de dealt with you in the years of formation, you have no more enemies in your life. Bona sifiwe. Wewe ni scatter by fire. Die, 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 die. Return to sender. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for God to release authority in your life, you've got, your heart has got to be formed. Turn to a neighbor who is next to you and ask the neighbor, how is your heart? How is your heart? Uh, talk to the other one who is not talking to you and tell them, hey, my neighbor, how is your heart? Because ladies and gentlemen, sometimes, in, and especially in this place, in this area, listen to me ladies and gentlemen, you are the one who determines how long you are going to take. You are the one who will determine how long you are going to take. Wewe bado unabeba watu, 1998, bado unabeba ule you will never amount to anything. Oh, oh, oh. Eh? Oh, 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 mwalimu wa math. Oh, huku ni wapi sasa? Wewe kwa hapo Instagram, huku ni wapi? No wonder unauliza huku ni wapi. Unajua people who have made it, they are waulizi huku ni wapi. We, what kind of heart do you have? Ah, uh, city lighters have come to challenge you even when you're not saying amen. What kind of? Can I show you what he did? Let me show you what he did. Let me show you what David does. So let's read it together. Want to go? They mourned and wept and decided to fast. Until dusk for Saul, for his son Jonathan, for the army of the Lord and for the house of Israel. Because they had fallen in battle. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, David, David asked the young the man, man who told him the story. story. Where are you from? He answered, I'm an Amalekite, Amalekite the, the son, son of a foreign, foreign man. man. Uh -huh. David, guess, uh, David asked him, uh -huh. how, how is, is this that you weren't afraid to raise your hand to strike the Lord's anointed? Shh. He wants him to leave. You want him to leave. Sincerely speaking, Bonasifue, where Bosa Kitujua, Mkoko celebration. I told you, I told you, prayers work. Prayers work. The God I serve, He answers by fire, by thunder. What kind of heart do you have? I'm a, let, let me come even closer. Una muona na chali mwingine. Ah, you see a man zimeisha tu immediately. Tukikuona hapa prayers tunafikiria umesoka umesoka kumbe ni kuskata. Of if you want to get to your 
place of destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not talk about David and say he's a man after God's heart. What are you doing about yours? Bwana sifiwe. Ase bwana sifiwe. Nikiona Rogers ameubiri. Sema, ah, I know that scripture. <laughs> let, let, let me show you. Let me show you so that we finish this. Oh my. I have 10 minutes. Uh-huh. Then David called out to one of the young men. <laughs> what kind of heart? <laughs> uh-huh. At this, want to go? At this, yes, David, David asked, asked him. How is it that you weren't afraid to raise your hand to strike the Lord's anointed? Uh-huh. Then David called out to one of his young men and ordered him, Go up to him and cut him down. So he attacked him and killed him. David told him, Your blood is on your own head because, because your own words testified against you. After all, you said, I myself have killed the Lord's anointed. David had opportunities to kill Saul. Two of them, clean. When you read in the book of uh, 1 Samuel 26, you will find the story there. David, they come up to a place and they find Saul and they are asleep. And Saul was drinking some water and his spear was next to him. David goes into his tent, cuts the robe of Saul. Saul does not even listen. And, and David, when he goes up the hill on the other side, he calls the soldier who is in charge of the army. He's called Joab. He tells Joab, you should die. Because you have not kept your master safe. Who is this? The man who is pursuing you. Uh, let me, you show me, because people are not believing me. Uh, show me the book of, uh, uh, there you go. Can we read it together? Want to go. So, so David, David took, took the spear, spear and water, and water near Saul's head. Uh, and they left. No, no one, one saw, saw them. or knew about it, nor did anyone wake up. They were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. A deep sleep. sleep. Uh-huh. Go on. Then David, David crossed, crossed over, over to, to the other, other side and stood, stood on, on top, top of a hill, hill some distance away. Uh-huh. There was a wide space between them. Uh-huh. He, he called, called out, out to the th- army and to Abner, Abner son sorry. of Ner. Uh-huh. Aren't you going to answer me, Abner? Abner replied, Who, who are, are you who calls who to calls? the king? Uh-huh. David, David said, said You're a man, man, aren't you? And who is like you in Israel? Why didn't you guard your lord the king? Someone came to destroy the, your lord the king. Uh-huh. Go on. What you have done is not, not good. good. As surely as the lord lives, you and your men must die. Because, because you, you did not, not guard, guard your master, your master the, the Lord's, Lord's anointed. anointed. Look, Look around, around you. you. Where are the king's spear and water jug that were near his head? Uh huh. Go on. Saul, Saul recognized David's, David's voice and, and said, Is, is that, that your, your voice, David, my son? David replied, Yes, it is, my Lord the king. Now, David is making noise to Abner, who is the, 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 the army commander. And he's saying, you and your men, you should die. Because David went into the, uh, in, into the tent of uh, this man, cut off his robe, picked his spear, and what else did he do? He picked the jar of, uh, of, of oil, of, of water. And the Bible says, no, no, look at me. What, what, you, what? you know, no, what, your heart. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> You listen. Buona sifiwe. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, for us to get to the place of our destiny, we need to deal with our hearts. And that's why now, David takes a bit of time. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you read in the book of 1 Samuel 20, is it 20 or 21? 20 or 21. Look, look, Look at this. The men whom God has given David, they are nothing. Uh, Show me 21. 21, 21 verse number 1. 21 verse number 1. Should be 21 verse number 1. Uh Uh-huh. Want to go? David went to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. Oh, no, no, it's 22. 22, sorry. This is when he went to Ahimelech. This is when he went to Ahimelech. It's 22. 22, 1. Uh Uh-huh. This is it. Want to go? David left Gath and escaped the cave of Adilam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down... Uh-huh. Go on to verse number two. 
all those, those who, who are distressed in stress and in debt or disconnected gathered around him and he became their commander about 400 men were with him what kind of men are these you imagine the people that the lord is bringing to you that's why i came to ask you what kind of heart do you have these men they end up becoming the mighty men of david but how did they come You've got to have a heart of patience. Yeah. I, to work and walk with people in their days of obscurity. Yeah. Bring me billionaires. What, Gojea. <laughs> what kind of men are these? The Bible says they are what? Go, go, show me again, show me again. What kind of men are these? Ah, uh, now you guys. You know that I, I am flowing here. <laughs> Is it bad? Want to go? All, All those who, who are, are distressed. They were what? Distressed. Of course, my share yendi poa. Ukiona Bible ina semoko distressed. Yendi poa. They were in what? Debt. Debt. For sure, the Bible does not lie. They were in debt, and they were also what? Or discontented. So while they were kosa kwa yo debt, na distress, they were. These are the kind of men that God brought to David. But it didn't matter to David. David still shepherded them. David still became their commander. Even when they were distressed, even when they were discouraged. Uh... But you see, many of us, after our season of shine, hmm, you don't want the distressed, you don't want the discouraged. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've come with a word to ask you. What kind of heart do you have? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is the very thing that will determine whether you get into your season of authority. And sometimes our hearts, and I want to close because I don't want to go into the points. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up next week. I'll pick it up next week. I'll show you what kind of heart David had. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Some of us are delaying our seasons of destiny because we are not working on us. I've made a statement there. Show me that statement. Show me that statement. We are going to read together. And then we finish this thing. I learned from Jermaine when he was praying. Uh -huh, go on. Want to go? This, this is, is a, a very, very interesting, interesting season, season because, because when, when you, you go, go through this season, it almost feels like it's obscurity because in each of the seasons, they deal with the formation of the man. They, this, both seasons, they deal with the formation of man. You're not at your highest level. Are you understanding me now? Now, in obscurity, God allows you to fight the lion and the bear for you to discover yourself. Are you understanding me now? That's what happens in the season of obscurity. You are in your discovery stage. So you need to know, before you can meet Goliath, you have to finish the bear, and you have to finish the lion. And when they come at you, you have to finish both of them at, uh, 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 as well. Hallelujah. So that's what happens in the season of what? Obscurity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You discover who you are. It enables you to fight Goliath and to be ushered into the limelight, your season to shine. Go on. What is this season of shine? Next, uh huh. In the season of shine, you take down now Goliath of God, and all of a sudden, the world discovers you. Now, in the formation stage, you must fight, you, you must now fight or battle yourself. After your season of shine, you must battle you. That's true. Because that's the time everybody now gets to know you. That's why you see, many times when people get a level of limelight, what do they do? You begin to see pride, isn't it? But you are not seeing it before. Because now, when the season of shine comes up, it also comes up with everything inside. Hallelujah. That's why now David, God does not allow him to go into becoming a king immediately. Because if he became a king immediately, there are things 
that he has not yet dealt with, he knows. And God knows that there are things he hasn't dealt with. Let me show you in scripture and I'll finish here. David becomes king, isn't it? His son Absalom decides he's better than his father. What does he do? He tries to overthrow the government. Isn't it? Do you remember that story? In the book of 1 Kings chapter 6, uh, uh, second, uh, Samuel chapter 16, he, be, he tries to overthrow the government. When he tries to overthrow the government, ladies and gentlemen, David runs away because Absalom was coming to kill him. When Absalom died, the Bible says, David rent his clothes and he began to cry. This person wants to take what belongs to you. Why are you crying? As he's running away, the Bible says, there is a guy called Ushia, 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 something. Yeah? That one. <laughs> what does he do? He begins to throw stones at David and he begins to insult David and he begins to curse David. But because David had dealt with his heart, there was no more darkness in him. Hallelujah. The men tell him, should we go and fall on this man and kill him? David tells them, leave him alone. How do you know whether it is the Lord speaking to me? You are the king. If somebody has insults at you, they should die. David tells them, the Lord will deal with them. This is not my battle. This is the Lord's battle. The Lord himself will deal with this guy. That is a man who has dealt with himself. Ah. That you don't abuse your place of privilege. Because you have done what? Dealt with yourself. How is your heart today? Ama wewe ukiwe kwa king kesho. My God. My God. We are all in trouble. Because when you go, you say, "Hey, Pastor, Bado Jamaliza, Sasita, these churches, ah, uh, these churches. You need to redeem time." Bona sifiwe, I say, "Bona sifiwe." You see, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the formation stage, and the formation stage is what helps you in your place of destiny. Because your place of destiny is dangerous when you become an authority. And there are some of us here today, our hearts are dark. It's just that you don't have the influence, you don't have the money, you don't have the whatever, but you should have... you. <laughs> Listen, you are delaying your season. You are delaying this thing. Because God cannot hand over that power to you. You are going to destroy people. You need to deal with that darkness in the heart. Amen. Just because somebody left you does not mean you are not attractive anymore. Maybe it's the anger inside of you that is chasing people away. Yeah. And you, you don't even know. Maybe you haven't dealt with yourself because they unceremoniously the job ended. You were called not to come to the following day. And you haven't dealt with that heartache. And that heartache until you deal with it God cannot make you a manager because you will probably do the same thing. Oh, the church hurt me. Not all churches hurt people. And sometimes it is difficult for you to receive because you are still marinating in the heart of the previous. David had a different heart. And I've come with a question to ask you. Some of you, 
you need to leave your heart here. That heart that is dark. That heart that is bitter. That heart ca that cannot accept. That heart, today, you need to exchange it on this altar. And on this wonderful day, the 6th of August, 2023, it's your day to exchange that heart. And say from today, I let go of that person. I let go of that guy. I let go of that girl. She hurt me or who hurt me or that boss hurt me or that pastor hurt me or who. I don't know who and who and who. Because ladies and gentlemen, God is saying, I can't bring you into your place of authority if you are still wounded the way you You are wounded. They pierced your heart. And they did it knowingly. And they knew it would hurt. But they still went ahead and did it. And there is nothing you could do about it. Today you need to exchange that heart here. For the Bible tells us that he who sets, he who the son sets free. Is free. Where are you? There are some hearts that have been bleeding. There are some hearts that have been crying. There are some hearts that are not okay in this house. God sent me here with a message to you to tell you. He knows that you were hurt. He knows that soul was after you. He knows. And he's saying, Today is the day that you exchange that heart. Let's rise up on our feet. You're saying to me, Pasi, hey, you know, that's actually me. Please come and do business here. Today it's you to leave that heart here. It's you to leave that heart here. Just leave it here. Just leave it here. Leave it here. Leave it on this altar. Let there be a day in your calendar that you can say to the heavens, me I left my heart. Some of us, our hearts are dark. 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 I'm telling you, it's just an opportunity that you have not found. It's just an opportunity you have not found. I need some pastors to go upstairs. Guys, Bosh, Kadenge, do you mind? Upstairs, along there. I'm sending some people to come pray with you. So, Gladys, I need some people here. I need some people here. And then we just begin to pray with people. Where is Moch? Where are you? Please begin to pray. Begin to pray for people. Begin to pray for people. Please, the people. Grace, where are you? Where is Jonah? We need to set our hearts free. There are some people who are really hurting. There are some people who are really hurting. Some people who are hurting. Makubi, you should be praying for people. I, you guys, please come with Don. So my heart becomes a home for you. Let me tell you, there is nothing as bad as a sick heart. There is nothing as bad as a sick heart. 
you try to move you can't do anything you try to lift yourself up you can't do anything your heart is unable 